Hi everybody, Dave Thomas here and this time I am building the Estes Ghost Chaser. This is a relatively simple um, payloader rocket and comes pre-colored and everything so you don't even need to paint it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside here. So most of it, even though it comes in a box, most of it's in this bag here. And so let's pull out the instructions and check the parts list. Alright, here's our main body tube. And then we have our payload section and nose cone. Self-adhesive decals a small parts bag that contains the fin can, the motor retainer, shock cord, parachute, and fins. Okay, so all of those parts there. And then a reducer. So everything that's supposed to be here looks to be. And so I'm going to clear the rest of this away and we will get right to work on the fin can. This model rocket is designed to be assembled without glue and so this is a good one for younger kids if you don't have to worry about the mess of glue although I will show you at the end of this how you can add some glue to make the joints more permanent and make the rocket more robust. So the first thing we're going to do is put the fin can together and so one side of this has lots of little pegs on it the other side has a lot of little holes and so just match the pegs with the holes put that together and squish it down until you close the seams there All right, and then I'm going to check and make sure that the engine retainer is fitting properly okay and it is All right, look for any gaps in your seams there and we can go ahead and take that back off. Okay, um, holding it with the uh, screw threads here to the aft, we'll just insert each fin into the holes and push it forward. And do that for all three fins. Okay. Now, if you don't glue this, these can come off again, just be aware of that. But when the engine retainer is hooked on here, so we'll put that on, um, the fins will lodge up against that. So there's little to no danger of those coming off in flight. Alright, next we're going to put that whole fin assembly into the body tube. Okay, so on our body tube here, one end has two slotted holes here, and the other end has a square hole, so this is the forward end. This is going to go in here, and so if you notice here, there are two little tabs, and those are meant to end up in the small holes. So just align that and firmly push it forward until those lock into place, and now if you try and pull back, that will not come off. Now if you do need to remove this for some reason, like you want to glue it into place, you can push down on those tabs while pulling and it will come back off. The next piece to add is the shock cord anchor and this is going into our uh, hole in the side. All right, and This comes in two pieces. So this little clip you can see is kind of rounded. The rounded part will go on the inside um, and when this is in place, this will be on here, and then this little clip fits in over like that. Okay, but you'll have it on the inside of the tube. Now, getting that back off, there we go. Okay, so place this part on the tube, and then we're going to insert this. And I don't think I can quite get this in the camera here. We'll see what I can do. I uh, kind of got to do it by braille here. And 
Happy. You should be able to hear and feel it click into position when it locks. There it goes. Alright, so... Now, I really can't... You can just see the blue down there, so that, that's the anchor in place. Now we're going to take the shock cord and in one side here tie a double knot. Alright, get that good and tight and then remove most of that free end there. Leave just a few millimeters. You don't want to cut it right at the knot or it may come unraveled. And even though this doesn't call for any glue, uh, if you have it, I would recommend using just a little bit of either white glue or wood glue. And I'm just going to put a little tiny drop of that right on the knot. Okay. And that is just to help keep that from coming unraveled later on. Now, take the other end without the knot, and you're going to feed that through the anchor and up through the tube. So just keep feeding it in until it comes out the other end here. And then you can pull that all the way through. Okay. And that should now lodge itself right in there. Okay, and then we're going to take the payload section here and attach that, first of all, here to the coupler. Alright, now that's pretty loose, and so what you can do is apply some clear tape to that and just keep putting it on until it gets nice and firm. You don't want this to accidentally come off in flight. So that needs to be on there very firmly. Now, I don't have any clear tape with me, um, and I plan to glue this on. Right, now, if I can do this with some masking tape, just as an illustration. All right, so if I apply some masking tape around this, and this is actually too wide, but it'll work for illustrative purposes. All right, so if I've got a layer of tape on there now, this goes on very firmly, and that's what we want. Okay, um, you can use masking tape; it's just not going to look very nice there. If you use a clear cellophane tape, it's not as noticeable. All right, so that's going to go on there, and then. The nose cone, this one you will need to actually use tape to friction fit. And it turns out I do have a roll handy. All right, now if you have the, the narrower tape, that'll make this easier. Um, and don't try it with a, one great big piece. Um, use several pieces here and make layers. and pull that back out. Okay, so that's firmer but not quite there. So I'm going to add another piece of tape over that. could still use a little bit more. Right, and you just got to keep doing this until you get a really good firm grip inside the tube there. There we go. And uh, even after you've done this, if weather conditions change and things like that, you might need to add or remove some of the tape. Now since this is wider tape, I'm going to remove the excess with my hobby knife here. Feels like I need to put a new blade in it. There we go. OK, 
Okay, so that'll go in there. This will go on here. Okay, and now the next thing is to attach the parachute. The parachute also comes in the small parts bag and then has its own that you'll have to take it from. And go ahead and open this up and there should be three loops of shroud lines here. One on each side and then one that goes across the middle. Now I'm going to show you two ways to do this. So if you just want to follow the directions as shown, take all those loops together and put them on one finger and then grab the middle of the parachute sheet itself. Okay, And then you can adjust side to side um, where the, the length of the shroud lines go. So you can just adjust those loops by pulling them one way or another. Once you've got it where all those corners are about in the same place, then grab down here and we're going to pass these through the eyelet here. Now normally the two would still be on here. I'm just taking it off to make this easier to do. Now the way the direction shows you pull this loop all the way through until it's big enough that you can pass the parachute through it and then you tighten this down and it'll form a knot on the eyelet there. Okay. The problem is, in doing so, you've let go of these and you may lose the relative positions of the uh, shroud lines. And your parachute may float kind of lopsided. All right. So the other way to do this is to use a snap swivel. And if you've seen any of my videos before this, you'll know that I just love snap swivels. All right. So here again, I'm going to reform my loops. Make sure all my corners over here are even once more. All right, and now I never let go of the shroud lines, even as I'm manipulating things here. I've always got at least two fingers pinched down on them. All right, so now I'm going to pinch these down really small. Now the snap swivel has got a snap end and a swivel end. We're going to put the shroud lines through the eyelet here on the swivel end. So put those through. All right, I'm still holding them back here so they don't change position. And now you just need to open it large enough for the snap swivel to go through. So pass the entire swivel through and then bring those loops down and tighten those and it forms a nice neat knot right there. Go ahead and recheck your corners on the chute. All right, they haven't moved or if they have, it's not much. And if you need to, you can loosen up that knot and reposition the loops of the parachute or the shroud lines. Once you've got it down here, I recommend putting a little dab of white glue or wood glue on these as well, just to lock them in place. Okay, so now the advantage here is that. I can snap this on and it's ready to go. And as the rocket's coming down, um, the chute may start to spin a little bit because no matter how careful you are, there's always just a little bit of difference in the shroud lines and this can cause the parachute to spin. And so if it spins without anything to allow that torsion to go away, uh, it'll start winding up the shroud lines and can eventually collapse the parachute. We don't want that. By having the swivel here, this allows that rotational motion to be dissipated and the shroud lines don't get all tangled up. This also allows you to store your rocket without a parachute or if you need to change parachute sizes. So maybe you've got a relatively heavy payload in there and you want a gentler ride down, you could change out this 12 inch parachute for a 15 or 18 inch parachute. Okay. It also makes it so if you do damage your parachute, it's very quick to take out this one, put in a new one. Alright, last thing to do then on the assembly is we're going to attach the shock cord to the payload section. Right. And we're going to do this by simply tying a double knot in it, much like we did on the other end. 
Okay, and go ahead and pull this from both ends and then both at the same time. And like we did before, just drop my payload section there, uh, we're going to cut off everything up to about six millimeters or about a quarter of an inch there. And once again, just add a little dab of glue. Alright, once we get to this point, I'm going to attach my parachute once more. And we're going to put the whole thing together. Just like that. Okay, and I like to fold my parachute first into a triangle here. And then I'm going to take my shroud lines about midway and pull those in a loop up into the triangle and then cover those with the two edges. So now I've got this long spike and I'm just going to fold the spike over and then fold it around so we get kind of a cylinder out of it. And then um, we'll just gather up the shock cord. Now if you're doing this for launch Put about three pieces of recovery wadding in there first, and then stuff down the shock cord, followed by your parachute. And make sure that gets down low enough that the uh, nose cone shoulder isn't going to run into it. And then make sure everything here is in and not getting caught between the shoulder and the body tube. So this should be relatively snug. All right. um, but not so snug that it can't get out. So if you put a little tension on it and it's just not coming out, you probably have something caught in there. Um, if you keep checking and there's nothing caught, then you can sand down these little ridges here just a little bit at a time. If it's too loose, and the way to check that is to shake this. Now in my case, um, see how that's moving all by itself? That's just due to the compression of the chute. That means it's too loose. But the other way is to just give it a little shake like this, and it comes if it comes out on its own, it's also too loose. So here, you do want to use some masking tape rather than uh, clear tape. And I would start with just about half a circumference worth. So you don't necessarily have to wrap the whole thing the first time. All right, and then we're going to put that back in. Okay, and now... It doesn't shake loose, but it doesn't take much to pull it loose, and that's what we want. So I'm just going to finish smooshing the tape down there. Put that back together. All right, and you don't want that to happen where it folds over and gets the sticky side up. Okay. So without doing anything else, this rocket can fly as it is now. Okay. Now, if you want a little bit more permanency to it, we can glue this together. And I'm going to show you how to do that before we put the decals on. So if you just want the snap together rocket, just fast forward here a little bit and we'll get right to putting on the decals. Okay, so first we have the payload section. And for putting this on, I recommend using either a tube type plastic cement or a gel type super glue. Um, either one will work in about the same fashion. And what we're going to do here is just put a bead of glue right on the inside of this. Not too much, but you do want a regular amount there so there's no gaps. All right, and then we're just going to fit this over and give it a twist as we do to distribute the glue. All right, and then you want to hold that in place for about 60 seconds before going on to the next part. You want to give that glue some time to grab there. I've taken the payload section back off just so that I can work on the rest of the rocket without bumping it around and loosening my glue there as it finishes drying. So for this part, um, if you want to glue the fins on and glue the fin can in, First thing to do is to remove the uh, 
retainer clip there and go ahead and remove the fins again. And as I mentioned, you can push in those tabs there and just gently work this free. All right, and then you can just pop this back open. All right, now for this part, um, you can use tube type plastic cement, although I recommend using a brush on one because you get more control with it. And we really don't need the thickness here. But I am going to do this over the instructions so I don't ruin my mat. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is put some glue into each of the little sockets there. And one of the drawbacks of the, the brush on cement is you do have to work fairly quickly or it dries up before you're ready. lightly put on a film of glue along the edges here. And this is one of the reasons why I like to use the, the brush on cement. If you do this with tube cement, it's going to ooze out on either side and, and look a lot less nice. Okay, and now we want it on the edges of the threads but not down in them. Okay, but once we've got that in place, very quickly now, put this back on and squeeze that into place. Okay, and as long as you don't want to touch this, you can see a little bit of a glue oozing out. With the brush on type, that's going to evaporate most of that away, and so it won't be a big deal then. Alright, uh, I'm going to quickly put on the motor retainer just to help squeeze things in, but then take it off again just in case I have any glue on the threads. I don't want to permanently glue that on. Now for the fins, you can do this in one of two ways, and I'll show you both of them here. Okay, the first is you simply take the glue and you brush that on to the surfaces where the fins come in contact with the fin can. Like that. Okay. Um, and you just have to be able to do this really quickly. So then you're going to put the fins in and very quickly push them forward. What can happen is sometimes the glue will make the fin bind so that you can't get it all the way up. Uh, you end up with a fin kind of hanging out this way. So if you're concerned about that, the other way to do it is to first put in the fin and then run the brush of the glue applicator right along the seam and the cement will be drawn in by capillary action. Okay, It's not quite as strong as doing it the first way but it's safer. Alright, and for my third fin I'm going to do it the, the previous way again here. I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes before we stick it into the fin can, or into the, uh, put the fin can into the body tube. Alright, a few minutes have gone by, and now we're going to go back to insert the fin can into the body tube once more. And here we're gluing two dissimilar types of surfaces. We've got plastic going onto cardboard. You can use the tube type cement for this, although in this case, the better option is a gel type of super glue, which that is not. That one is. 
Right. In either case, we're going to run a bead of glue right around the inside edge there. Right. It doesn't have to be heavy, but it should be continuous. And now we'll just go ahead and put this back in until it clicks once more. And then just kind of rotate it. Just, you're not going to rotate much, but just kind of wiggle it in there a little bit to make sure the glue sets. All right. And once you're sure that there's no cement on this that's still wet, you can go ahead and put the retainer back on. Okay. Now, I haven't tried gluing on the anchor here, and I'm not going to, because there's no easy way to do it um, without getting the cement on the rubber there, and I don't want that to happen. Okay. And in fact, since this is already attached, if I had done it completely from scratch, um, and if you are watching this video before even starting to build it, if you want to make this permanent before you ever put the shock cord in, you can glue that clip to the back of this. Now the drawback is it's going to be messy. Uh, and if you're using super glue, there's a good chance you'll glue your finger in there. So just keep that in mind if you want to do that. But if it's already been installed like this, there's not much you can do. You know, if I try to capillary in some plastic cement or super glue, there's a good chance it's going to get on the rubber and weaken it. So now our rocket is ready to go once more. You just have to pack it back together and it can be flown. The last thing for us to do is to apply the decals. And so you can look on the box. This is the recommended layout. So this Ghost Chaser decal will go along the body tube. And then these fin pieces here are meant to go on two of the fins with one fin um, left odd without any decor on them. Now you don't have to do it that way. You could put one of these on each fin, just on one side, and maybe have one fin that has both. That's entirely up to you. Uh, in fact, this will fly very nicely without any decals. You could even add your own decals. You could paint this. You could marker it. Whatever you like to do. Okay, so that's kind of completely up to you. Um, I do recommend that first of all you wash your hands thoroughly and that helps get some of the oils and dirt and stuff off that will show up underneath the, the decals here in the clear spots. So with clean hands, go ahead and peel off the stickers here. Okay, so if I'm going to do mine similar to what's on the box, uh, first I'm going to turn this. So this, this side has the launch lugs on it, which means at launch time it's going to be against the, the launch rod. So I'm going to run my main decal here right about in this point. So it'll be showy um, when it's on the launch pad. And these are having a tendency to peel the backing away with it as well. So just be a little bit patient. There we go. And try and handle these by the edges as much as you can. Now something to be aware of, as soon as these touch, they're almost permanent. So you do have to be careful about it. Um, you can sometimes get it light enough on there that you might be able to move it again. Okay, that looks reasonably straight. Um, if you have to, again, sometimes you can gently lift up on these, but if it starts pulling up the paper, just stop, okay, and go with what you got. All right, once it's in position, start on the center and gently press that down, and then work your way toward the edges, pushing any air out. Just like that. try one of the fin pieces here. So these are meant to go like this. Make sure you don't have any crud on your fins like I do there. Now these can be moved a little bit more. 
And the main thing is just try and keep them consistent. Right, even with clean hands, my fingerprints still show up. So I'm going to try and get these right along the leading edge there. And let's see. Nice thing about these clear fins is it lets you line up the decals almost perfectly. A little off there. Does not want to come up. Alright, so that's really trying to stick there. It's a little less permanent than on the tubes, but not much. So try and get that down the first time. Okay, and one thing you can do if you, if you like the, the odd fin type thing here, is you can also just put the decals on one fin and leave the other two blank. Uh, which I think I'm going to do. I kind of like the transparent fins on this. So I'll leave the other two unmarred. Okay, so now I just put this back together the way I showed you earlier in the video, and you are ready to launch. So have a great launch, a safe recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos.